Well, this has been all interesting playing around with these functions, but so far we haven't actually done anything practical with them. We've simply expressed the output of the functions as vectors and displayed them on the console, but that doesn't really help us any in the problem because what we really want to do is to create new uh, columns in our spreadsheet, which here is represented as this tipple. What I have done is uh, cleared out my global environment with the little broom, cleared out the output console with the other little broom, and then reloaded the, the uh, tipple freshly again here so that things are a bit less cluttered on my screen. So what we would really like to do here is to add a new column called, uh, instead of participation, let's call it participation numeric, and that will uh, be a column that will have the replacements of 100 for pass and 50 for fail. We can create this new column using the mutate function from the diplier package. Recall that the mutate function generates a new column that gets added to the right side of the data frame. The way that I'm going to accomplish this is to insert my if else function in as the argument to create the new column. So here's my new column, position numeric, and I am assigning the value of that column to be the output of my if else function. Since the participation uh, column is a vector essentially that has a link that is the same length as the number of rows in my data frame. That should be great because the number of items that this function outputs is going to be equal to the number of rows in the column. So when I create the new column position numeric, I will get the correct number of things. If you're paying close attention, you'll notice that uh, something has happened here. In my earlier examples, when I wanted to pass in a value for that column, I had to explicitly say that the participation column was a column from the grades tibble. And I did that using this dollar sign notation that we should be familiar with at this point. You'll notice here that I was able to skip it's saying what the tibble was. And the reason is because I specified the tibble as the first argument of the mutate function. So this is a general pattern that we see. If we have a function, often that function allows us to specify as the first argument the data structure that applies in that function. So if I specify the grade tibble, that allows me to get away with not having to specify what tibble the new column is a part of or what tibble the input column is a part of as I did here. Let's run this line and see what happens. So here if we compare the previous tibble, we'll see it had the rows name, test, participation, and paper. Now it has the same columns, name, test, participation, and paper, but my new column participation numeric has been added on the right side of the tibble as expected. Once again, this is sort of useless because I didn't assign the output of the mutate function to anything. And in R, if you don't assign the output to anything, it just simply gets displayed on the console. If I want to do something with the output, I need to put it somewhere. So I could assign it to a new tibble data structure by using the assignment operator. When I do that, I can see up here that I have created a new tibble and it indeed does have this new column added to it. If I'm not interested in creating a new tibble, I can actually just make the changes and put them back into the same tibble as before. Let's try that. Here's once again is my grades tibble. This time though, instead of assigning the output 
to a new tibble like I did here, I'm just going to put the output right back into the same tibble that I started with. So I'm reading the data from grades and then I'm putting the resulting uh, data back into the same named data structure. So I carry that out. Now if I ask what grades is, I can see up here I didn't generate a new tibble in my global environment. I've actually changed the value of grades from not having this last column to having it again. The other possible variation that I could do on this is to take the output of my mutate function, but instead of generating a new column called participation numeric, I could just replace the old participation column with the new data that I've generated. So the question would be whether I need to maintain these values, pass fail values. If I need to have them for the future, I should add a new column. But if I really don't want them anymore, I could just simply replace the participation column with this new data that I've generated. So let, we'll have to read the file back in again because I've messed up that tibble by mutating it. So here's the original data frame again. Now let's mutate the data frame and place the newly generated data back into the participation column and then save it as the same data frame name again. And here we see that the participation column has indeed been changed instead of being the values character strings pass and fail, it is now the numbers 100 or 50.